Due to her official duties, Arno was forced to attend an imperial banquet. Since the girl had completely forgotten about the event, she had gotten very drunk with the knights from the order the previous night. All right, I'll show myself to the emperor and get out of here. I have no desire to stay here tonight, and I can't have any of my relatives seeing me like this. The girl thought to herself, I need to see the emperor secretly from my mother, and then I can return home. The emperor is probably on the third floor right now. Arna decided to sneak the emperor through the balcony. When she jumped onto the balcony, she saw a young man. Arna was surprised to see the man. The man extended his hand to the girl, but she suddenly jumped aside. After a while, Arna was already on the other balcony. Your lordship, there has been some suspicious noise coming from here, the guards exclaimed. The man asked them not to worry in vain. He explained that an adorable stray cat had run along the railing. I wonder who it was, the man thought. Arna made it to the third floor after all. Here, too, it turned out to be crowded. Seeing a derelict white mask on the table, Arna decided to put it on. The emperor of the Western Empire and Arna's immediate superior, Cyclion IV, was coming up the stairs. He was also the girl's own uncle. It's been so long since we've seen you. Did you happen to see my daughter here? Duchess Rosalia Brillacht asked. Arna froze fearfully in place. The last thing she wanted was to run into her mother. Arna jumped out into the hallway. Rosalia, along with her friend, also decided to go down a floor below. What's the matter? Why is she following me? If she catches me for the hole and also smells the breath coming from me, then the scandal I certainly cannot avoid. The girl thought to herself. Arna hid around the corner, hoping her mother would pass by without noticing her. There's my stray cat, said the man, covering the girl with his cloak. This is the man I met on the balcony. But who is he? thought Arna. Have we met before this day? I don't remember you, whispered Arna. The man asked her to be quiet. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't expect anyone to be here, exclaimed Duchess Brillacht. Please don't apologize. My companion is a bit shy, so I have to hide her from you, replied the man to the Duchess. Well, I won't bother you, said the Duchess and walked away. Well, did you find what you were looking for? asked the man to Arna. The girl decided not to answer him anything. It was too long to explain why she was hiding from Duchess Brillacht and who she really was. To be honest, I was under the impression that you came to this banquet completely by accident. So what are you looking for here, and why did you come? I am extremely interested in you. You remind me of a certain stray cat, said the man. If he thinks I got in here illegally, why is he reacting so calmly? Why doesn't he call security? He's kind of a weirdo. I don't remember him. I don't think I've ever seen him before. Is he a stranger? The girl thought to herself. Anyway, thank you for your help. I'll get back to you a little later and be sure to thank you. Arna removed her badge from her uniform and handed it to the man. Well, now if you'll excuse me, I have to go. The girl exclaimed, and with a quick step, she headed for the ladies' room. Arna felt like she was going to throw up right on top of the man. Her stomach had been hurting badly for hours on end now. Mr. Cassian, the emperor summons you, said an assistant who approached. Cassian was originally from the Northern Empire. The lands here were much richer and fertile. All of this was a credit to the swordmaster Ravelgos. It was this man who freed the country from the monsters. In the entire history of the empire, only a hundred knights had been honored with this title. Cassian had great respect for the swordmasters and wanted to meet at least one of them in person. That was why he had come to the Western Empire. So you would like to meet a swordmaster in person. Did I understand this correctly? Unfortunately, he never appears even at my beck and call, said Emperor Cyclian IV. The emperor didn't actually want to call his niece Arna. He knew very well that his sister Duchess Brillacht was against her daughter being a swordmaster. The duchess believed that her daughter was preventing her own marriage. Ouch, that hurts! Cassian heard a woman scream. Looking down, he saw that some woman was leading a stray cat he already knew by the ear. They caught it after all. Cassian grinned to himself. Let's get back to talking about marriage between our countries. 
Have you taken a fancy to any young lady yet? asked the emperor. This banquet was organized only for the invited guest to pick a bride for you. Confess to me, have you spotted anyone yet? inquired the emperor. He knew if Circassian found a suitable mate, it would promote harmony between the Western and Northern Empire. It was given to me by a lady who is imposing to me. I will marry her. Cassian held out Arna's badge to the emperor. The emperor stared at the badge in surprise. Arna was called the pinnacle of the Western Empire's military might. She was a rescue hero that even the Order of the Golden Dragon respected. Within the walls of her ancestral home, Arna was only seen as a naughty daughter who refused to marry. Arna, you know Ariel, don't you? I am sure he is your destiny. Besides, he is the count of a neighboring empire, Rosalia exclaimed. Oh, the window! I could jump out of it and not hear all this, the girl thought to herself. She was sick of hearing about marriage from her mother. Arna was completely content with her life. All the girls your age have already experienced the joy of marriage. You should taste it, too. Arna, do you know what they call you in society? They call you the emperor's mad dog. Is that normal? You deserve love, not that nickname. The duchess exclaimed. The emperor's mad dog sounds really cool, thought the girl. Even if I do strike up a conversation about an engagement with you, the guys just scatter because you've blown away everyone who approaches you. The duchess continued to be indignant. As your mother, I want only one thing for you, for you to be happy. The duchess sank tiredly into a chair. But does a woman's happiness lie only in marriage? I am sure every woman has her own happiness. Arna objected to her mother. But it makes my heart bleed to see you not even trying to find love. By the way, you've already been matched with a suitable partner. The emperor has taken care of it, the duchess announced. The Duke of Ternugan from the Northern Empire has decided to take you as his wife. He is said to be the first groom in his country. Since no one within the borders of our homeland wants to marry you, we'll have to marry you off to a foreigner. No way! Why should I ever marry a man I don't know? The girl was indignant. Just try to meet him. How will you know whether you're right for each other or not if you don't get acquainted? They say he is so handsome that ladies are blinded by his beauty, said the Duchess. I never wanted to marry a handsome man. And why do you all keep forcing marriage on me? I don't want to meet anyone, and I'm not going to get married at all, screamed Arna. As the Duchess continued to insist, Arna still had to agree to meet the Duke. On the day of the viewing, Arna was dressed like a real doll. Marriage to a foreigner? A wedding in a foreign country? Why would I want to do that? I've lived a quiet life so far, being single. I don't want to trade my freedom for marriage. Irritatedly thought Arna, How beautiful my daughter is after all. That white dress suits her very well, exclaimed the Duchess. I'll make the Duke himself refuse to marry me. Arna decided to herself. In time, my husband and the Emperor will arrive here, said the Duchess. That's it. I'm finished. With my father and the Emperor here, I won't be able to arrange what I wanted. I need to escape from here immediately. With despair, thought Arna. The girl went to the window, and while I, her mother, didn't see her, hurried to get outside. Okay, I got out of the house. What's next? Where should I go? thought the girl. Suddenly, she saw a black carriage approaching the house. Arna rushed with all her legs to the carriage. Arna opened the door of the carriage and saw a young, blonde-haired man. Here we meet again, stray cat, said the man. I apologize if I'm interrupting you, but could you please drive on without stopping here? Asked Arne and got into the carriage. You look like you're trying to escape from an unwanted marriage. Well, you can use me if you have the need, replied the man. Why does he keep bailing me out? Maybe he's a con man and wants something in return, thought Arna, studying the man. You are looking at me so carefully. Don't be afraid. I don't need anything from you, said Cassian with a smile. If you allow me to take advantage of you, then be my boyfriend for at least this day, asked the girl. I would be honored, replied Cassian. Where are we headed now, asked Arna, looking out the window. Cassian answered the girl that they were on their way to their first date. He got to play the role of her boyfriend, after all. 
you and I are going to show the world that we are a couple. If word gets out that you already have a lover, your engagement will definitely be postponed. And that's a great idea of yours. I'll agree to go out with you, Arna exclaimed. Cassian decided to take the girl to a local candy store. Look, it's the same lady Arnie. I wonder who that guy next to her is. The guests of the pastry shop whispered. Arna was happily eating the cake and didn't even notice she had gotten her face dirty. Lady, do you want everyone to know sooner that you have a boyfriend? Cassian asked. Cassian reached over to Arna and removed the cream from her face. Hmm, the desserts here really are extremely delicious. The rumors weren't lying. Mumbled Cassian, licking the cream off his finger. Did you see that? Loudly ached the patisserie patrons. What the hell is he doing? Frightened, the girl thought. Thank you for today, said Arna. At first, the girl doubted that she would enjoy her date with this man, but to her surprise, it went very well. And thank you so much for your help. As soon as I get a chance, I'll return the favor. Arna was certain that after something like that, the foreign duke would refuse to take her in marriage. You'll have to do your best to repay me in full. And why do you find the very thought of marriage so distressing? You told me yourself that you haven't even seen your soulmate, said Cassian. I simply don't want to marry anyone. It's all my parents' whim. And I don't think the man who agreed to marry me is mentally healthy. Even the thought of having to leave home for a foreign country scares me, answered Arna. Already a couple of hours later, the whole capital knew that Lady Arne had a fiancé. Arna, my dear, I admire your courage. That's quite a thing to go on a date with another man right in the middle of an appointment see. Your mommy won't mind if you marry your secret lover, the Duchess exclaimed. However, the Duke of Ternugan reported that the rumors don't bother him in any way. Still, he is a marvelous man, but I want to assure you that I will be on your side in any case. Pick whoever you want, just get married. What's the matter? My plan has failed. I'll have to refuse that duke right in the forehead. He doesn't seem to understand otherwise, thought Arna. Mother, I'll tell you one more time. I don't want to marry anyone. Arna hoped that she would eventually be able to get through to her parents after all. Let's make a deal like this. If you get married and stay married for three months, but you still dislike your husband, you can divorce him and come home, said the Duchess. You will have to temper your temper and live quietly. That is my condition. If after all these efforts your mind does not change, I will never again speak of your marriage. And no fighting or killing. That is a prerequisite. Rumors that the Duke of Ternugan was getting married spread throughout the Northern Empire. At every tea party, the ladies discussed the Duke's impending marriage. Cassian of Turnagan was the son of the emperor's brother and second in line to the throne. He ranked first among the empire's most enviable suitors. The dream of every young lady was to marry the Duke of Turnagensky. The news of the Duke's marriage created a great stir in the northern empire, but Cassian, the culprit behind everything that was happening, was calm. Did you find out anything else? Cassian asked his assistant. Nothing new overall, however. There is something that concerns me. I have managed to find out that the Duke of Brillet has a troubled child. He shows great promise, but he has been nicknamed the Emperor's Mad Dog, replied the aide. It seems the reason why it's hard to dig up anything about Duke Brillet lies in that mad everything. It is said that if anyone says anything about this dog, they are immediately visited. This is a very cruel man. His identity is shrouded in darkness. Arna arrived at the Duke of Ternugan's estate. Greetings, Lady Arna. I am Cassian, Duke of Ternugan. It's you, screamed the girl. Oh, he's mocking me. Why didn't he reveal his identity to me back then? Did he decide to make a joke that way? Thought Arna. Nanny, we're going back. I've changed my mind about getting married. Arna turned around and walked towards the airship. Lady, where are you going? Have you forgotten that you promised to pay me back? Whispered Cassian. Looking out the window of his study, Cassian saw that his future consort was sitting in a tree and the maids were searching for her, shouting the girl's name loudly.
And how did she get up there? I feel like I picked up a stray cat rather than finding a wife for myself. Thought Cassian. I feel like someone is watching me from that window over there. I've been spotted after all. How could I have gotten to this point? Why do I have to hide in a tree? Arna thought to herself. Arna jumped down from the tree to the ground. And who are you hiding from? Asked Cassian, who approached. And how long have you been standing here? The girl exclaimed fearfully. No, I just recently came up here. I want to ask you a question. How does it feel to meet your husband willy-nilly? Cassian asked. Not too bad, answered Arna briefly. I can see that you are scrutinizing me, but you are thinking about something else, said Cassian. Where did you learn those wimpy speeches? Don't forget, you and I are still not married, exclaimed Arna. That can easily be remedied. And remember, it's too late. There's no point in running away. Cassian kissed the girl's hand tenderly. The day of the wedding had come. Arna's parents couldn't make it, but promised they would watch the proceedings through the magic orb. You are the most beautiful bride we have ever seen, the maids exclaimed. I can't believe I have to go through all this, even though I don't even want to marry him. Just like that, I have to go to the wedding, and even without love, thought Arne. My beautiful daughter, in this wedding dress you shine like a star. Congratulations on the birth of your new family, my dear, exclaimed the Duchess from the magic ball. At least I'll make my mother happy, thought the girl. Cassian and Arna entered the marriage hall of combinations. Arna doubted that she was doing the right thing. First of all, her future husband was a stranger. Second, she had absolutely no knowledge of him. What if he was evil or greedy? Third, the girl was afraid that by marrying she would lose her freedom. First of all, on behalf of the newlyweds, I would like to thank everyone who attended today's event. The priest said in a loud voice, Bride, do you swear to always love your groom for better or for worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness and in health? I swear, mumbled Arna. She hated to deceive the clergyman, but the girl didn't plan to always love the man standing next to her. Cassian had also vowed to always love his wife. Then seal your vow with a kiss, said the priest. If you want to run, then run, for this is your last chance. There is no turning back, whispered Cassian. The duke drew the girl to him and kissed her lips. As of this moment, Sir Cassian, Duke of Ternugan, and Lady Arna are legally husband and wife, the priest announced. The maids led Arna to the duke's chambers. Upon entering the duke's bedroom, Arna immediately flopped down on the bed. Now it was possible to rest. The maids wished the girl good night and left the room. I completely forgot about the wedding night. What am I supposed to do now? I can't just sit here. And I don't want to be known as the wife who killed her husband on the first day of marriage. I have to run away, thought Arna. The girl opened the window and climbed onto the sill. And what are you doing there? Asked Cassian, who entered. Oh, how did that happen? He caught me again, surprised Arna. I asked you what you were doing there. Why aren't you answering me? Cassian asked again. I got stuffy, so I decided to get some fresh air, replied Arna. You decided to get some fresh air in the middle of the night, and you climbed up on the windowsill? You decided to kill yourself? Cassian clarified. Not at all. Why did you decide that? replied the girl. Let this situation remain as a big misunderstanding. I can't tell him that I tried to run away from here because of my first wedding night, thought Arne. Cassian walked over to his newly wedded wife and helped her down from the windowsill. The servants in Arne's house told me she was very fragile, but I didn't think her folks had driven the girl to the point of wanting to leave this sinful world on her own, thought Cassian. Cassian lifted the girl in his arms and carried her to the bed. No, I don't want to spend the night with someone I don't know at all. What am I supposed to do now? The girl thought fearfully, going over all the possible options in her head. Cassian laid the girl on the bed and covered her with a blanket. You've been through a lot, so just get some sleep, said Cassian. He left the room and closed the door tightly behind him. Arna knew that for aristocrats, marriage was a kind of unsophisticated tool. It was a union with only one purpose, 
marital well-being. Arna had always wanted to be free. She didn't want to bind herself with the shackles of marriage. Alan, I have a question for you. If a wife wants to put her hands on herself on her wedding night, what could that mean? Cassian asked his assistant. I misunderstand your question a little, but I dare say it means that the girl does not wish to be ringed to death, replied Alan. By the way, yesterday, the second prince asked me to give you an invitation. Alan pulled an invitation card from his breast pocket and handed it to the duke. Arna decided to communicate with her mother using the magic orb. Oh, right. There's talk that your subordinates are revolting. The Knights of the Golden Order have gone on strike. They are demanding that you return. These are the very words His Majesty asked me to convey to you, said the Duchess. Communication has already been lost with some of your subordinates. I have tried to contact you, but you have not answered me for a long time. The Emperor is terribly upset. Arna heard some noise in the bushes. Turning around, she saw one of her subordinates. What is this idiot, who should be in the Western Empire at the moment, doing here? I purposely didn't invite him to the wedding so that I wouldn't be suspected of being a knight. What on earth did he forget here? Irritatedly thought Arna. Seeing his commander, Crave waved his hand cheerfully. The first thing to do is to chase him away before anyone notices him, thought the girl. Arna jumped up from her seat and wanted to head towards Crave, but she felt someone's presence at her back. Tangled in the hem of her own dress, Arna began to fall on her side. Cassian immediately ran over to her and picked her up by the waist. That man walks almost silently. He's already caught me off guard a few times. If this keeps up, may he guess that I am a master swordsman. I'll have a hard time hiding my skills from him. Thought the girl. I can feel the tension in her whole body. She's like a cat that sensed danger. Passed through Cassian's mind. And what have you been doing here? Cassian asked his consort. Nothing much, just drinking tea and chatting with my mom. And what winds are you here for? inquired Arna. The girl was afraid that her spouse would notice Crave hiding in the bushes. And how did you like my gifts? Did they suit your taste? The duke asked the girl. Arna had already forgotten that the maids had brought her several boxes from her husband in the morning. The girl had not yet had time to unpack them. You ask me if I like them? I love them, exclaimed Arna. The duke guessed that his spouse was indifferent to his gifts. Oh, my dear son-in-law is here, exclaimed the duchess from the magic sphere. Arna had already forgotten that her mother was still in touch. Greetings, Duchess Brillacht, said Cassian, bowing. Arnie, what a handsome husband you have. How lucky you are, after all, admired the duchess. Mom, stop it, shouted Arna and turned off the magic orb. Why are you reacting like that? Your mother is a very nice woman, said Cassian. You still haven't answered my question. Why did you come here? Isn't it business hours? Asked Arna. She decided to change the topic of conversation. She didn't feel like talking about her mother. I came to inquire about your well-being. Is marriage to me really that painful for you? I will help you. Just tell me why you decided to commit suicide, replied Cassian. I didn't plan any such thing. It was all a misunderstanding. Don't worry about yesterday. Everything is fine, said Arna. I see. I understand you don't want to talk about it now. That's okay. You'll open up to me when you're ready for it. Oh, well, I won't get in your way. I'll go. Lowering his head low, Cassian said, Wait! Arna grabbed Cassian by the sleeve of his jacket. She had a wild urge to tell him the whole truth. To tell you the truth, our first wedding night scares me. That's why I want to get as far away from here as possible, the girl confessed. I can't believe my wife is this nice, mumbled Cassian and laughed softly. If you don't want to, I won't lay a finger on you, promised Cassian. Just don't tell anyone about it, or there will be all sorts of gossip, and we don't want that. It will remain our little secret. He's offering me his help again, just like the other time. However, his offers are always kind of murky. I'll have to find out what kind of man he is and what he's capable of. Arna thought to herself. Alan, I think there's a rat in our house. Find it immediately and kill it, ordered Cassian as soon as he returned to his office. The maids of the ducal manor were crowding around the broken magic orb. 
They couldn't figure out who had done it. The orb had a protective spell on it. An ordinary person couldn't break it. Ah, it's nice that my mother won't bother me with her calls anymore. I'm the one who broke that nasty thing while no one was around, thought Arna, enjoying her morning coffee. Forgive me! I'm the one who should have been watching her. I shouldn't have taken my eyes off her, exclaimed the red-haired maid. Yeah, you wouldn't pay for that orb even if you worked like a slave in a galley for ten years. I can't believe you broke such a valuable item, screamed the head maid. Ava, do you happen to know what's going to happen to that red-haired maid? asked Arna to her maid. For breaking a priceless item, she'll be thrown out of here like a dog. She will also have to pay her debt. She made a huge mistake. Now no house will accept her. She won't be able to get a job anymore, narrated Eva. Arna decided to intervene in the situation. She was the one who broke the magic orb, so other people shouldn't suffer because of it. Explain to me what kind of mess you're making. I'm aware that the magic orb is broken, but I don't see it as a big problem. Quickly disperse and mind your own business, said Arna. Are you sure we can leave it like this? asked Arna, the headmaid. We are all human, so we have the right to be wrong. We'll buy a new sphere and forget about it, replied Arna. Mistress, I will be loyal to you for the rest of my days. You are a true benefactor. You saved me. I will be grateful for your mercy until the day I die. I will work hard and will not spare to risk my life for you, the red-haired maid shouted. Erica, sweetheart, calm down. I knew something like this could happen, so I took care and bought some spheres beforehand. Eva showed the red-haired maid a small black box. In it lay another magical sphere. And just what did I set all this up for? Arna thought. When she met Crave in the garden, Arna almost screamed in terror. He was dressed as a woman. It's my disguise. I decided to take a job here as a maid, explained Crave. And you're sure no one will guess you're a man? asked Arna. Sometimes subordinates drove the girl crazy. How can you say such things? Have you forgotten I am the master of disguise and infiltration? I came here because my place is by your side, Commander. You're the only person I can follow. And I still remember how you saved my life once. I can't leave you alone in this place. You know my loyalty is stronger than death. What kind of marriage is this anyway, if your husband comes first for you? I can see you're trying to be weak and vulnerable to match your current status, but I demand my tough commander back, shouted Crave into the back of the departing girl. What about your oath to always stand by us? Why are you acting like this, commander? Crave turned the girl around to face him with a sharp motion. Shut up and come home. My uncle Sarna will be riding back soon, so ride with him ordered Arna. Darling, explain what's going on here, asked the duke to his consort. Ah, oh, well, it's... Arna didn't know how to introduce Crave to the duke. My dear, you mean this is the new maid, Cassian clarified. I wouldn't say she's new. She came with me from the Western Empire. You've probably just never seen her before, explained Arna. Madam Duchess, Mr. Duke, I'll leave you to it, said Crave and bowed low. From the look on her husband's face, Arna realized that he didn't believe her. Are you angry with me? Asked Arna to her husband. Angry? I was just wondering what kind of conversation you had with that maid. It seems to me that you are trying to hide something from me. Besides, that maid is quite strange. She looks more like a man, replied Cassian. I've thought about it before. Your eyes are beautiful. They have a rather unique color. Really? and a lot of people are afraid of me. They say I have the look of a killer. In a surprised voice, Arna said. From a very young age, Arna had been known as the cruel red-eyed killer, the executioner of Levelgos. She was always treated as a cursed monster with eyes as red as blood. People were afraid to look her in the eye. They thought the girl was cursed. I'm surprised to hear you say that. I was always told that my eyes indicated a birth curse. Only one person per generation is born with that eye color. My grandfather and uncle were red-eyed swordsmen, narrated Arnie. So your uncle was the hero who caught the most terrifying dragon that woke up 30 years ago, asked Cassian. 
If I remember correctly, it was your uncle who ended the war with the Alliance ten years ago. He is a hero of your country. My uncle was indeed nicknamed the Dragon Slayer, but it was me who ended the war with the Eastern Alliance. Maybe it's a good thing no one knows about it, thought Arna. You know, I've decided that I'm going to call you by your first name from now on, and you can call me Darling. I don't think I can call you Darling. I've never called anyone that before, the girl admitted. Then call me by my name, too, asked Cassian. Looking at my spouse's reaction, I don't think this man is dangerous. Next time, I'll be sure to catch him and interrogate him, promised himself Cassian. Crave, explain to me what happened, asked Arna. Ever since you, Commander, announced your marriage and left, the Knights of the Golden Order have been rioting. You yourself know we joined the Order to be near the Commander, but our Commander suddenly disappeared. Narrated Crave. I was the first to resign, followed by everyone else. For some reason, I thought all my knights were adequate. I never thought it would end up like this. I should have told them my marriage was only for three months. The girl thought to herself. Erica cautiously peeked into the room. How long has she been standing there? Thought Arna. As far as I can tell, that maid is bothering you, Commander. I'll deal with her, said Crave and headed for the door with a firm step. Hey, what do you think you're doing? wailed Arna angrily. Her Highness the Duchess has already found a dedicated maid. You can try to take the place another time, said Crave to the maid. Crying bitterly, Erica ran away. Crave closed the doors of the room tightly. Arna decided that as soon as she got the chance, she would immediately send Crave home. He was causing her a lot of trouble. Mistress, your tea is ready. Crave poured the flavored beverage into cups. I want to be alone, so you may go, muttered Arna in a disgruntled tone. You'll be traveling to the capital soon, so you'll need maids like me, replied Crave to the girl. There was one process that all married aristocrats had to go through unconditionally. Their marriage had to be approved by His Majesty the Emperor. It was a means of resolving family disputes and declaring the inheritance rights of aristocrats. Madam, may I speak to you? said the headmaid to Martha. That's not fair. We were the first to start serving you. You got abruptly close to this maid, thus upsetting us. Did you like her so much because she is also from the Western Empire? Asked Erica. I think there was some misunderstanding. I want to assure you that I treat everyone equally. I love you all, replied Arna. The day of departure to the capital came. Since Cassian had business to attend to, Arna had to go first. I'll try to make it to the capital as soon as I get all my business resolved. Cassian kissed his spouse gently on the cheek. If you miss me, bear with me for a little while, Cassian asked. Crave went to accompany Arna. He was in his usual military uniform. It was unusual for Arna to ride in a carriage. Usually the girl traveled on horseback. Arna remembered her kiss with her husband. What am I even thinking about right now? This is already some kind of complete nonsense. Most likely it's all because I'm used to my measured life. There are a lot of new things around me right now, so I'm just thinking silly thoughts. The girl thought. Suddenly the carriage shook and began to lurch to the side. Arrows flew into the carriage from all sides. Panic began to set in. Protect the carriage, shouted Crave. Your grace, there's been a disaster. Lady Arne's crew has been ambushed, shouted the agitated butler. Madam. Don't worry, I will protect you even at the cost of my own life. With a trembling voice, Erica flew by. I'm sorry, Erica, said Arna and knocked out the maid with one blow. The girl then knocked out the guard who was protecting the carriage doors. We're going to have to do some work here, mumbled Arna. The girl summoned her sword. Nevermore, shouted Arna and rushed into action. Cassian jumped on his horse and rushed to his consort's aid. I really hope she's in one piece. Have I really started to worry about someone? Is this some kind of joke? Could this be all because I'm afraid of losing someone useful to me? Or is there another reason? Cassian thought to himself. Crave knew that there were two legendary swords from House Levelgoes in the world. Arna was now fighting the one that consumed the souls of opponents. It was the infamous Nevermore Sword. You little outrage. How could you summon me just now? 
It's been so long since you sought my help, and now you're exploiting me like your slave. Sword Nevermore was indignant. Don't get smart, exclaimed Arne and returned the sword to its place. Commander, we should have left at least one alive. How are we going to find out who sent all these people here now? Crave became indignant. The Duke of Turnigan rushed over. Jumping off his horse, Cassian ran to his consort and hugged her tightly. It's a good thing I followed you just in case. You're not hurt? asked Cassian to his spouse. I'm fine, thank you, replied a blushing Arna. What happened here? Who killed all these people? asked the Duke. Damn, now what am I supposed to answer him? He can't find out that I did it all. The girl thought fearfully. I'll explain it all to you now. The rescue of Arna, who was almost kidnapped, and the destruction of the enemy is to Sir Crave's credit, said Duke Sarno, Arna's uncle. It was. He alone destroyed all those men, exclaimed the girl. She was glad that her uncle had planted a great idea in her mind. Did you really alone destroy all those people? With skepticism in his voice, the duke asked. Yes, I did, answered Crave. He had to tie up all that credit on himself, as he knew the commander would surely punish him if he told the truth. What a big mansion the northern emperor has after all, Arna exclaimed after seeing the imperial palace. The emperor's butler came out to the newlyweds and bowed low to them. Upon entering the bedroom allotted to her, Arna immediately fell on the bed. She was very tired from the journey. The girl heard a knock on the door. A smiling crave peeked into the room. I decided to keep you company. I've been dreading leaving you alone lately. And you know what I've been thinking? Why would a man as handsome and famous as the Duke of Turnugan marry you? There was another knock at the door. Arna thought irritably that she could hardly rest easy in this house. Arna, it's me, said the Duke. Crave and Arna looked at each other fearfully. I'm coming in, said the Duke and yanked the doorknob. When the Duke entered his consort's room, he saw Crave there. Uncle Sarno had something to tell me, so he sent a knight. By the way, what brings you here? said Arna in a carefree tone. And I wanted to let you know the routine for tomorrow, and I also just missed you, replied the Duke. Mistress, I heated your bathing water for you. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm disturbing you, exclaimed Eva, who entered. No, that's okay, I'm already running to bathe, shouted Arna. Well, then I'll take my leave too, said Crave to the Duke. Wait, I need to talk to you, said the Duke. I want you to tell me who you really are. Honestly, I'm starting to guess who is standing in front of me right now, so don't lie. There are two things I'm really interested in at the moment. One, tell me your real name, who you really are, and what position you hold. Two, tell me what your relationship is with my wife. With your wife, we are very close, but it would be rather difficult to explain. I don't want to deceive you, but it will be very hard to tell you the truth as well, answered Crave. I came here because I was very worried and anxious about being away from Arna, but don't think that she and I have some sort of romantic relationship. It's something else entirely that binds us. Answer me this, are you a master swordsman? Cassian asked. No, I am not. What makes you think that? Surprised Crave. The only one who could have dealt with all the thugs who attacked the crew is a swordmaster. No matter how much I think about it, I can't guess which one of you all is him. Cassian said thoughtfully. All right, you're right to hide your identity. I am sure of the fact that you came here for your niece because you are concerned about her. Well, welcome to the Northern Empire, exclaimed the Duke. Crave guessed that the Duke of Ternugan thought he was his uncle Arna, the swordmaster of Levelgos. So you mean you had to pretend to be my uncle? Arna clarified. Now is the best time for you to leave here and as soon as possible, said Arna. Crave once again assured the girl that he wasn't going anywhere without her. Arna's uncle had a sword even more famous than himself. It was a dragon sword named Levitine. There was only one sword in the world at the moment that could replace the majesty of the dragon sword. His name was Evermore, and it was the one Arn had summoned. Evermore was the complete opposite of Nevermore. It was born of light and led the lost warrior soul into the Hall of Valor. He was called the Sacred Sword. Why have you summoned me only now, mistress? 
Have your feelings for me faded? You promised me that you would value me when we made a contract with you, said Sword Evermore. Ever, can you do something for me? No one else can handle this but you. Stay with my subordinate Crave for a while. Pretend to be his levitine, Ask the girl. I will serve you faithfully, Mr. Evermore, shouted Crave loudly and bowed low before the sword. Every morning, afternoon, and evening I will clean you until I am blinded by your brilliance. Arna noticed that unlike the Western Empire, the Northern Empire was much larger and more pompous. Cassian and Arna wanted to see the Northern Emperor, but unfortunately he was ill and couldn't receive them. Are you telling me you have no idea what the second Prince Mackenzie does? Do you even remember that you are the crown prince? Or are you a pathetic, insignificant creature? Asked the emperor to his son. Well, how many times can you call me insignificant? Crown Prince Edward thought irritably. Arna decided to take a walk in the emperor's garden. Suddenly the girl heard cautious footsteps behind her. Turning around, the girl punched the pursuer in the face with her fist. With a loud aghast, the crown prince fell to the ground. Oh, I'm sorry, are you all right? Asked Arna. The prince assured her that he was fine. And can you tell me where unearthly creatures like you are born? You are beautiful. May I know your name? This weirdo is a little too weird. Maybe I should just run away from here, thought Arna. I realize I scared you and I still haven't introduced myself. It's just that I'm sure you must know my name, exclaimed the prince. Guards ran toward the prince. He looked away from them for a split second. Arna was vaporized in the same second. My dear brother Cassian, I think I have finally met the girl of my dreams. She is simply an angel. I met her on my way to you. I guess this is love at first sight, exclaimed the crown prince. And who is the beautiful lady who drove you crazy? Asked Cassian to his cousin Edward. That's just the thing. I was going to ask her name, but I missed it. I only took my eyes off her for a moment and she disappeared like a mirage. Fortunately, her beauty is ethereal, so finding her won't be too hard. Edward replied, It's not often you meet a lady with such dazzling silver hair and scarlet eyes. Edward didn't notice that Arna, whom he had described so colorfully, had entered the room. There, that's her, shouted the prince when he finally noticed the girl enter. She is the angel I met in the garden. Lady, answer me. How come you're here too? It's definitely fate. I'm sorry. I haven't had a chance to introduce you yet. This lady is my wife, said Cassian, cradling his spouse to his side. This is your wife, marveled the first prince. That's right. Say hello, Edward. This is the new mistress of the Duchy of Turnigan, Duchess Arne of Turnigan, and also your daughter-in-law. My dear, Say hello, this is my cousin Edward, Crown Prince of the Northern Empire. After it became known that Crave had rescued the Duchess, the maids began to follow him in droves. My name is Crave. I am her ladyship's patron knight. I hope we get along well, dear ladies. Crave noticed one of the maids, Erica's red-haired maid, scrutinizing his face. Crave remembered her. This girl had followed him when he was undercover at the ducal house. Is there something on my face? Asked Crave in an annoyed voice. This girl was pissing him off wildly. He always felt like she was about to crack him up. Have you and I never met before? Erica asked. You haven't, no, of course not. Where would you and I have seen each other? Exclaimed Crave. But then why do you look so familiar? Said Erica thoughtfully. I realized you liked me, so in this interesting way, you decided to draw attention to yourself said Crave. Not at all. I'm pretty sure I've seen you somewhere, but I just can't remember where, insisted the girl. I figured out where you might have seen me. I mean, we were all traveling to the Imperial Palace together. You sat with the Duchess in the carriage and I accompanied you. Have you forgotten about that? Crave asked. Agatha burst into Arnie's room. She was a famous designer in the capital and Cassian's godmother at the same time. There was to be an imperial ball in ten days. Arna needed to be there. Cassian insisted that a new dress be made for his wife. Agatha decided to tell Arna the latest news from the imperial palace. Northern Emperor Giuseppe had three children by different mothers. He had two sons and one daughter. 
the first Prince Edward, born from the previous empress who passed away many years ago. The second prince, Mackenzie, was born after one night of the emperor with a servant girl. Princess Cynthia was born in marriage to the current empress Volcaria. At this point, the princess was only six years old. As of today, the empress family is in complete chaos. You should know that the relationship between the princes is quite strained, Agatha warned. In aristocratic families, there's always a division between the first and second heir. They are very sensitive to the issue of inheritance. Isn't the first prince already determined to be the heir to the throne? Arna clarified. That's a bit of a moot point. I don't think we should dig into it. I'm sure you'll sort it out on the spot and figure out how you should handle the situation. Agatha replied. Cassian brought his consort to the roof of the building to show her the stargazing. It's a beautiful view from up here, don't you think? When I was a kid, I used to come here alone a lot and enjoy the view, said Cassian. I had no idea he could appreciate such simple things. Cassian is much nicer than I thought. Still, shooting stars are very beautiful. Arna thought to herself. The day of the emperor's ball had arrived. How I hate this dress. It completely restricts all my movements. Since several designers worked on it, I'll have to be patient. Annoyed, Arna thought. Arna, you can relax. You won't have to bow to anyone in this hall. That's the kind of influence I have in this empire, said Cassian to the girl. Now I'll tell you briefly about the local government officials. These people are from the Earl House of Children. They have power, but no reputation, so some aristocrats treat them as those who earned money illegally. You'd better not socialize with them, but I'm 100% sure that they will constantly hover around you to gain your support. They're like leashes, always around people who have a good reputation. There are some people from the Berisha family standing over there. The history of their house is long enough, but they have no power. Why they will annoy you for other reasons. Cassian, while you were telling me all this, I thought of something. There are bound to be some people here that I will need to maintain friendships with, am I right? Said Arne. There simply aren't any at the moment. Again, who you want to be friends with and who you want to stay away from, you can decide for yourself. I'm not going to force my opinion on you, replied Cassian. By the way, I noticed that the emperor is not present at this event, and I'm not sure if he will come. The emperor knows full well that we will only come here to say hello to him. Don't you think he's avoiding us? Asked Arna to her husband. The man in military uniform beckoned Cassian over to him. You can go now, don't worry about me. I'll find something to amuse myself with. This man looks extremely agitated. I think it's something urgent. I'll see who I can befriend and who I'd better keep my distance with, said Arna. Crown Prince Edward arrived at the Imperial Ball. He wanted to see Arne one more time. There she is. And just like that, I don't see my brother around. I won't get a second chance like this. Edward thought to himself. Long time no see, lady. Edward said in an ingratiating tone and bowed to the girl. Oh, it's you, Prince Edward, the girl exclaimed. Edward was pleased that she remembered him. Maybe she likes me too, since she remembers my name, the blushing prince thought. To tell you the truth, I would like to tell you something. May I take a little of your time? Let's move to the terrace for just a few minutes, Edward suggested. Lady Arne, what do you think love is? In my opinion, love is something that is imprinted into a person's heart. I don't care whether you're married or not. In fact, I'm engaged to be married myself. Lady Arna, I love you. Ever since I first saw you, you have been the only thing in my world. And I remember perfectly well that you are the consort of my cousin. But can't true love be found after marriage? If I understand correctly, you intend to have an affair with me, yes? Arna clarified. You've got it right. Marriage is politics and love is an affair. Why don't you find out with me what true love is? If you don't want to hide our relationship, there is one option, Edward exclaimed. You can divorce my brother at any time and be with me. And if you're worried about my fiancé, I'm willing to leave her for you. He has begun to annoy me wildly. I can barely restrain myself from hitting him. Gritting her teeth angrily, Arna thought, 
Oh, look at that there, shouted Arna and pointed her finger to the sky. Edward also looked up at the sky. With a sharp movement, Arna stunned the crown prince. Without making a sound, the prince fell to the floor. You should be glad you got off with a minor fright. I wanted to finish you off in the first place. You were saved by the fact that you are the crown prince, grumbled the girl. The kidnappings of young ladies continue and we still have no evidence. The victims discovered have nothing in common. All of this is starting to make me crazy. The aristocrats have stepped up security, but it's no use, Quaid exclaimed. We need to find the kidnappers and stop them before more victims show up. Cassian, are you even listening to me? What are you thinking right now? Let's talk to you about this topic a little later. At the moment, I'm concerned with slightly different matters, said Cassian. Through the window, he saw that Edward and Arne had gone to the terrace. Cassian guessed that Edward had impure feelings for his wife. Upon returning from the terrace, Arna confronted her husband. Where have you been? Cassian asked. About that. Don't be surprised and listen to me carefully. What I tell you may shock you. Arna decided not to hide anything from her husband. After all, he would eventually find out for himself anyway. I think your cousin needs psychological help. His Highness just confessed his love for me. He started saying that I will only comprehend true love through a secret affair. Hearing his consort's words, Cassian laughed out loud. He had not expected such a prank from his brother, and he was greatly amused by his consort's reaction. Is it true? The crown prince told you such a wild thing? Why didn't you kill him? asked Crave. I just knocked him out and left him lying on the terrace. I found out later that the unconscious prince was found by his assistant. I couldn't kill him since he is the crown prince, replied Arnie. There's a reason they say the crown prince is a bit sick, mumbled Crave. Erica watched Crave surreptitiously. He seemed very suspicious to her. Lately, the knight had been constantly talking to his sword and rubbing it to a shine. That weirdo is very suspicious. Although all the maids are praising him, but I don't believe in his kindness and sincerity. He's clearly up to something and could be dangerous to mistress, thought Erica. Crave noticed that the red-haired maid was following him literally at his heels. This was also noticed by the sword. Why does that girl keep looking at you? Maybe she has a crush on you? Asked the sword to Crave. Mistress, I have something to tell you, exclaimed Erica, who walked up. Crave almost screamed in horror. He hadn't noticed the girl had sprung up next to their table. Arna asked Crave to leave her alone with Erica. And what did you want to tell me? I'm listening to you carefully said Arna to the maid. I want to warn you that this knight looks extremely suspicious, and it seems to me that he is secretly in love with you. He literally won't take a step away from you, Erica exclaimed. I think he really wants to get your attention. By the way, I've noticed that he's always talking to his sword. The other knights behave quite differently. He follows you around like he's possessed. Wouldn't it be better to stay away from him? Don't be afraid. I've known Crave for a long time, and so I'm sure I'm in no danger. Thank you for your concern, Erica, said Arna. How dare you do that? Do you want to die, every last one of you? I don't believe my ears. Report to me again, shouted Northern Emperor Giuseppe. 101 dead, cause unknown operation failed. In a trembling voice, one of the advisors read, I chose the best people for this operation. How could this even happen? exclaimed the emperor, clutching his head. Your majesty, calm down and drink this. The counselor held out a vial of purple liquid to the emperor. The emperor immediately drank the contents of the vial. Cassian, that puppy, how dare he do such a thing? He refused the marriage I wanted to arrange for him and went to the Western Empire to find a bride. He personally met with the decrepit Cyclian the Fourth. The emperor hissed angrily. He constantly seeks peace and reciprocal trade. It makes it difficult to oppose him openly. I should have gotten rid of him long ago. He has lived in the shadows for a long time, so I fell for his ploy. I need to find another chance to destroy him. Right now he's hiding behind a shield, but it's not hard to break it. It will be enough for us to get rid of the Duchess. Once this puppy loses his consort, he'll be gone from the outside world forever. 
the emperor ordered the empress to be summoned to him. Isn't it nice to get out after all this time? Eva exclaimed. A few days ago, Arna had received an invitation to a tea party from the Marquise Melashinova. The girl really wanted to refuse, but Eva insisted on her way. What on earth are you talking about? Why don't you want to go? I have told you a thousand times that personal relations are an integral part of your life. You must go by all means. Otherwise, I'll tell your mother everything. When Arnie entered the courtyard of the Marquise Melashinova's estate, she saw several invited ladies. Welcome, Duchess. Thank you for your precious visit to our humble abode, exclaimed the Marquise. To begin with, please take a seat. The seats have been assigned completely at random. As Arna sat down at the table, she saw some of the ladies looking at her rather spitefully. By the way, have you heard how Lady Haley is doing? Rumor has it that she fainted at the news of the Duke of Turnigan's wedding. Is she unhurt? One of the ladies asked. Arna was enjoying her desserts. She paid absolutely no attention to what was being talked about at the table. It's a pity for the poor thing after all. Lady Haley loves him so much she's even fainting, the lady said as loudly as possible. Oh, and don't tell me, this news has spread in all social circles. That's why Lady Haley rarely leaves the house now, exclaimed the second lady. You seem to be having quite a pleasant conversation, said Arna. She finally heard the people sitting at the table practically shouting, getting her attention. She's pretty weird, so it's best to ignore her. Thought the ladies sitting at the table and started talking about all sorts of topics, discussing all the nobles they knew. Arna was glad that she wasn't being drawn into the conversation. The girl absolutely hated gossip and rumors. All such talk was foreign to her. Arne is at the Marquise Melashinova's tea party now, Cassian interrogated the butler. He was glad that the girl had found some female friends. Sir, you must hear me out now. This information concerns the attack. It seems that your assumption was correct. At the moment, all the evidence has disappeared, so we'll have to continue investigating, said Alan from the Magic Sphere. Investigate for as long as you see fit, replied Cassian. The ladies present at the table gasped in surprise. Turning around, Arna saw her consort. Ah, Duke, and I didn't realize you had decided to visit us. I understand you have decided to take your dear spouse away from us, exclaimed the Marquise. And you are extremely clever, Marquise, said Cassian, putting his arm around Arne's shoulders. My dear wife is very shy. So, Mrs. Melashinova, next time be sure to keep an eye on her. And now we'll be off. I wish you a good evening. Arna, what do you think of today's tea party? Cassian asked his wife as they headed home. It was fun enough replied Arna after a bit of thought. The ladies present at the table were very kind to me. They are quite courteous. While I was eating dessert, they didn't say a word to me so I could enjoy my food in peace. Still, the people in the Northern Empire are wonderful. I'm very tired today after all. If I'm called out next time, I definitely won't go anywhere, no matter how much Eva talks me into it exclaimed Arne, collapsing on the bed. The next morning, Eva announced that Arne was invited by Her Majesty the Empress. Since Sir Crave and I are from the Western Empire, we have been denied entry to the palace for security reasons. Madam, I have a bad feeling about this. You better be careful, said Eva. I hope I won't be criticized for such a pompous appearance, thought Arne as she entered the Imperial Palace. She took Erica with her as her maid of honor. Thank you for your visit, Duchess of Ternugan. Unfortunately, the preparations are not yet complete. Her Majesty the Empress is not yet ready to receive guests. I'm sorry, you'll have to wait a little longer. The Empress's maid exclaimed, I arrived on time and they're making me wait. It's done on purpose. Arna guessed. Arna froze in place and waited for an invitation from the Empress. At one time, the girl had stood guard twelve hours a day. Standing in one place motionless was completely habitual for her. You mean she's been standing in one place for an hour and a half? The Empress clarified to her maid. The plan that Empress Volcaria had prepared was as follows. She deliberately gave a cold reception so that the Duchess would show rudeness towards her. The Empress wanted to humiliate the Duchess of Turnigan.
I heard that the Duchess is as fragile as crystals, so she won't last long. Let's see how long she lasts, mumbled the Empress. After three hours, Erica began to feel her knees trembling. She wasn't used to standing in one place for so long. Your Majesty, if we continue like this, we'll be in trouble. If word gets out that the Duchess was treated so disrespectfully without reason, then we'll be in trouble. The Duke won't like it. The Empress's maid exclaimed. All right, let her in, ordered the Empress. Agatha said that the current Empress is only two years older than the Crown Prince. Maybe that's why she's acting like a little rambunctious child who doesn't know how scary the world is. Thought Arna, looking at the Empress sitting before her. God bless you, Your Majesty. I apologize for the late greeting. I am Arna, Duchess of Ternugen. Welcome, Duchess. I thought you would have difficulty with the culture of the Northern Empire due to your background, but you are doing well. I have long wanted to invite you and have a leisurely chat like this, said the Empress. If I had known that you would come at such an early hour, I would have prepared in advance, but I was very tired yesterday, so I overslept. I think you will understand, for we both made a mistake. I've prepared lunch in a sunny spot, so come on in. The dining table was simply amazing with its exquisite dishes. It seemed like there was food for several dozen people, not for two people. Duchess, did you enjoy the food? asked the Empress. Yes, everything is very good, replied Arna, and it was pure truth. The girl liked the dishes on the table very much. They not only pleased the eye, but also the taste buds. Strange, but your face says otherwise. You probably don't like the food here. It's all because you're from the Western Empire. By the way, I heard you were at the Marquise Malashinova's tea party yesterday. Rumor has it that the Duke himself personally came to pick you up. That's the first time I've ever heard Cassian do anything like that. He never behaved like that with his former lover. Ah, you probably don't know anything about her. Your Majesty, may I ask you something? It seemed to me that the aristocrats of the Northern Empire are very interested in other people's private lives. In the Western Empire, it's not polite to wash other people's bones. Is it a difference in mentality? The Empress looked at the girl in surprise. She was speaking to her rather rudely. The Empress wasn't used to such a thing. The Empress invited the mistress to her place. A letter from her arrived in the morning. Madame has gone to the palace but has not returned yet. Eve told the Duke. She was very worried about Arna. Let's go to the palace now, exclaimed the Duke. Duchess, let's take a walk with you in the garden. There are some simply marvelous varieties of roses here. You're sure to love it, said the Empress. The Empress led Arna to a gazebo that was in the farthest corner of the garden. She motioned for the girl to go first. Arna felt a rather unpleasant feeling of unease. The girl also noticed that her maid Erica had disappeared somewhere. Erica was approached by one of the Empress's maids. She gave Erica a tray with two cups of tea. On trembling legs, Erica carried the tea to the two nobles, the Duchess and the Empress. Suddenly, the Empress's maid stepped on Erica's foot. Erica fell to the ground, dropping the tea tray from her hands. Arna ran up and caught the tea tray. With her other hand, Arna caught the falling Erica. The Empress's maids opened their mouths in surprise. How dare you make such a commotion right in front of me? What kind of rude behavior is this? Immediately fall down in front of me, demanded the Empress. Do you have any idea where you are? Don't they teach basic etiquette in the North? Your Majesty, this is all because of me, Erica exclaimed, dropping bitter tears. I firmly believe that one of the Empress's maids stepped on Erica's foot. She has one shoe in the mud. Did the Empress really build this? But why would she do all this? Thought Arna. Don't cry, Erica. It is the superior's responsibility to be responsible for his subordinates. Arna said in a quiet, calm voice. But I could get you humiliated because of me, Erica exclaimed. Erica, let's go somewhere else first. It's not like you and I were ordered to stay here. It will be better to do it at the gates of the Empress's palace than in the middle of the garden, said Arna to her maid. What is the best way to resist an insolent man with the highest title? One must simply wait until he crosses the line. Arna thought to herself, 
Arna and Erica knelt at the main entrance to the Empress's palace. I think ten hours of my humiliation will be enough for her, thought Arna. All this brings back memories of my training. When I was a squire, I beat everyone I didn't like. I was on my knees for a very long time, listening to the captain's moralizing. She has been kneeling and smiling for over two hours, the Empress's maid reported. You told me she was frail and good for nothing, the Empress exclaimed in an irritated voice. Your Majesty, His Highness Crown Prince Edward is here. A maid who burst into the room exclaimed. Edward walked over to Arna and got down on one knee in front of her. He felt sorry for the girl kneeling on the bare ground. Don't cry, my little bird, said Edward to the girl. First of all, I wasn't crying. And secondly, what birdie? Annoyed, the girl thought. I will talk to the Empress and you will be pardoned. That's all I can help you with. Edward exclaimed with his hand on his heart. You don't have to do that, Cassian said in a calm, emotionless voice. Arnie, take my hand. I'll help you up. Cassian held out his hand to his spouse. I can't do that. Her Majesty the Empress has ordered me to kneel. Won't I make her angry if I rise? The girl asked. Her anger is not a problem. Cassian dropped to one knee beside his consort. The Duke took the girl's hand and kissed it gently. Your self-abuse is far more important to me, said Cassian, smiling gently at his spouse. Your Grace Duchess, Her Majesty the Empress said you may go. Also, she wanted to discuss something with His Highness the Crown Prince, said the Empress's maid. Erica, you can get up off your knees. We're just leaving now, shouted Arna to her maid. Erica wanted to get up from her knees, but felt a wild pain and fell on her side. Of course, if a person stays on his knees for hours on end, it will be extremely hard for him to get up afterward, Cassian thought to himself. Cassian picked up his consort in his arms and carried her to the carriage. How is my consort feeling? Cassian asked the visiting physician. The Duchess's knees are slightly scraped and swollen. Her Highness should refrain from exertion for the next few days. If she doesn't take care of herself, she'll be lame for the rest of her days. I will give the ointment to the maid, replied the doctor. If you use the ointment regularly and don't strain your knees, there won't even be any scars. The doctor handed Eve the ointment meant for the duchess. Give the ointment to me. I will treat my consort's knees myself, said Cassian. And where is Eva? She was supposed to help me with the treatment. Why did you come here? asked Arna to her husband. Let me apply this ointment to your knees, asked Cassian, kneeling down in front of his spouse. I have no chance of resisting. He uses his beauty too skillfully. A blushing Arna thought to herself. The girl lifted the hem of her nightgown, revealing her injured knees. It's going to hurt a little. You'll have to bear with it, said Cassian, and began to gently apply the ointment to the girl's knees. The injured legs of the consort hurt Cassian's heart. Arna had purposely injured herself as soon as she arrived at the Duke's manor so as not to be different from Erica. If her knees remained uninjured, then the Duke would start to suspect something. Arna, can I ask you one question? You could have just returned to the manor, refusing the punishment, so why did you take it? Cassian asked. I was afraid you'd get in trouble, lied Arna. From tomorrow and onward, I will make sure that the Imperial family will never dare to do that to you again. Cassian promised his spouse. If we print such a thing, we're finished. I don't know who you are, but we can't let this go to print. This news is very dangerous. The editor-in-chief of the local newspaper exclaimed. Alan placed a small brown travel bag on the desk. Opening the bag, the editor-in-chief saw gold and money. This is an advance payment. If you publish this news, I'll pay you twice as much. So make up your mind soon, Dominic, said Alan, and walked out of the newsroom. Alan reported to the Duke that his order had been carried out. The next day, the local paper was abuzz with the news that the Empress had invited the Duchess to her house and was mocking her. Of course, the Duchess came to us from the Western Empire, but is that a reason to mock her? Her Majesty has acted extremely cruelly. I wonder what the Emperor will do. Will she really get away with it? The townspeople wondered. Early in the morning, a local newspaper was brought to the Emperor. 
Damn it, they're out of their minds. How can they let such a thing be published? Do they really want to die for insulting the imperial family? The irritated emperor tore the newspaper in half. Your majesty, please calm down, asked the emperor's counselor. Would you calm down if you were me? Shut down this publishing house immediately. I won't let a rumor go around the empire that the empress hates foreigners, shouted the emperor. I will definitely contact the relevant authorities and shut down this publication. By the way, the emperor of the Western Empire sent you a letter through the wizard tower, said the counselor. The emperor of the Western Empire wrote in his letter that he was saddened that his niece was hurt. He warned that if the duchess is hurt again, he will not be silent. I'm sure it's all Cassian's shenanigans, shouted the emperor and pounded his fists on the table with all his might. This news has left us in incredible shock. Your father rushed home all in tears, can you imagine? He almost rode out to fetch you to bring you home, but I was able to calm him down. His majesty was tearing up too. Narrated the Duchess of Brillat. We sent a letter of rebuke through the wizard tower. I believe the northern emperor should know of our outrage. And how is my son-in-law? How has he reacted to this whole situation? It seems to me that this publication is his doing, grumbled Arna. Wow, really? That's my brother-in-law. I was sure he wouldn't just let you be treated like that. Now tell me what really happened, asked Duchess Brillacht of her daughter. To my surprise, the Empress wanted to meet with me the other day. You remember that girl who was tasked with keeping the magic ball safe? Well, I decided to bring her along. I think the Empress was trying to embarrass me by humiliating Erica. My girl, I know I have you just fine. Keep up the momentum and don't let anyone hurt you, Duchess Brillite exclaimed. But if I show everyone my true character, people will quickly realize that I'm not so fragile, said Arna. Don't worry. If it comes to light, we'll get over it. You remember I always raised you to be strong, not a house flower. The most important thing is that no one finds out that you are a sword master. Everything else is fixable. Duchess Brillacht replied to her daughter. Cassian went to the Imperial Palace. At the moment, his majesty is furious. He has decided to turn a blind eye to everything since the Empress has been wronged. But he has promised that he will not be so lenient to you next time. You should bow at his feet, said the Emperor's counselor to Cassian. Wow, it turns out that I won't be able to see the Emperor today either. I have to protect my family, so I will use every means available to me, replied Cassian. I've told you everything I had to tell you. Where are you headed now? asked the counselor. I am grateful for your labors. Now I have to meet someone. I still have unfinished business here. Cassian strode with a confident stride toward the Empress's workroom. The Empress was carefully reading an article in the morning paper. The maid reported to her that the Duke of Ternugan had arrived for a visit. Long time no see, Duke of Turnigan. I thank you heartily for gracing me with your visit. Please have a seat. The Empress pointed with her hand to a vacant chair. Cassian walked over to the Empress's desk and picked up the portrait of Cynthia standing there. Cynthia is quite a lovely child. She is so young. Your daughter must have learned to write and read by now. It would be very sad if she were to get her hands on today's paper. I think it would upset her, said the Duke. Are you threatening me? clarified the Empress. I am upset by your words, Auntie. I am merely reminding you that you will have a very difficult time if we end up on opposite sides. This is your first and last warning. Stay away from the people I hold dear. Cyclion, I can see that you're in an extremely good mood today. The younger brother of the Emperor of the Western Empire's Emperor remarked, It seems like the world itself is favoring me. I still can't believe that the Northern Empire insulted us so much. We can no longer worry about losing our Arna, replied the Emperor to his brother. And I thought you agreed to this marriage knowing full well that Arna would not stay there for long, noted the Emperor's brother. Actually, I didn't want to give Arnie in marriage, Rosalia insisted on it. I just gave in to her entreaties. She kept coming to me and asking me to marry her daughter off to a good man. 
replied the emperor. And I am well aware that it is only because of Arna that our empire has received such honor. Also, I am well aware that if she does not like something in the Northern Empire, she will surely return home. She's a noble lady with a strong character. Agatha came to Arna to prepare her for the upcoming ball. The girl was to learn a few simple movements. I'm so sick of all this. I can't wait for three months to pass so I can go home. Arna thought to herself, smiling sweetly. Arna tried to repeat the movements, but it was extremely awkward. Your mother spoke the truth. She informed me that because of your poor health and innate frailty, you have had little training in the lady's teachings. Agatha exclaimed. Arna heard someone's quiet laughter. Turning around, she saw Cassian. The girl wondered how long he had been standing there. Oh, I'm sorry, Arna. It was extremely amusing to me to watch you try, said Cassian. Cassian, are you going somewhere? asked Agatha. Cassian answered her that he had one appointment scheduled. He thanked Agatha for helping his wife not only with her clothes, but also with the rules of etiquette of the Northern Empire. Go ahead and leave already. Stop showing your courtesy here. I'm really embarrassed. You said something about a meeting, so go quickly. Arna mentally turned to her spouse. Arnie, aren't you going to say anything to me before I leave? Cassian asked the girl. I don't even know. I wish you a safe journey. Embarrassed, the girl muttered. Cassian leaned over his spouse and kissed her forehead. I hope to get the same from you next time. I'll be back late tonight, so don't wait up for me and go to bed, said Cassian. Arna had been sitting by the window for hours now, staring at the road. This is the first time Cassian has been away from the manor for so long. For some reason, it keeps me up. Maybe I'm getting myself worked up for nothing? Arna thought to herself. Suddenly, the girl heard the excited shouts of the guards under the windows. We knocked out another one. It looks like someone suspicious has gotten into the manor. We need to increase the number of guards, shouted the guards. Someone suspicious? What do they mean? thought Arna. Suddenly, the girl heard behind her the clatter of a sword being pulled from its sheath. Seconds later, the masked man put the sword to the girl's throat. The mercenary scratched Arna's neck with his sword. Blood came out. Are you a duchess coming from the Western Empire? The masked man asked. Your lordship, Knight Rashalis has returned. He must have arrived at the manor by now. Alan reported back. I see. What other news? Cassian asked. You ordered me to look into the attack on the Duchess, but unfortunately the only witness is dead. We recently found his body, replied Alan. Should I continue the investigation based on all of this? No. Stop there for now. The only reason I ordered you to do this investigation is because of that suspicious night crave. I wanted to find out as much as I could about him. I have little faith that he was the one who struck all the attackers with his sword that day. I really hope I'm just placing a lot of importance on trivialities, but still. Your lordship, new information has come in regarding the Golden Order. You should be aware of it. It appears that their captain and swordmaster have suddenly disappeared. Alan narrated. You say the swordmaster is missing? That's very interesting, mumbled Cassian, rubbing his chin thoughtfully. Crave was beginning to look even more suspicious to him. What was this knight doing near his consort?